Neuroscience is rapidly advancing, with innovations in brain-computer interfaces that can record from and stimulate the brain to drugs that can modulate or even enhance brain functions. Scientists who study the brain are beginning to understand more and more about our thoughts, emotions, personality, and how we make decisions and perceive the world at a biological level. These advancements have the potential to greatly benefit society, reduce suffering from brain diseases, and enhance how we might even understand ourselves. Today, people with Parkinson's disease can get a neural implant to reduce their symptoms. You can use an EEG headset to measure your level of focus while studying, and psychedelic therapies are helping people with depression, PTSD, and more. However, Similar to the concerns around artificial intelligence, people are beginning to ask questions about what may happen if brain technologies are used without carefully thinking through the possible consequences. Should companies be allowed to collect your brain data and sell it for profit? What if brain technologies could not only be used to treat neurological conditions like Alzheimer's disease, but could also be used to enhance your memory? Scholars and researchers have been thinking about these possibilities and concerns for a long time. In fact, it's an entire field of study called neuroethics. Neuroethics considers the ethical, legal and societal consequences of evolving brain science and technologies. Neuroethics can be used as a problem-solving tool to ensure the development of responsible neurotechnology. The brain is unlike any other organ. It controls our behavior, cognitive function, emotions, and our very sense of self. Because of these unique attributes of the brain, neuroethics explores a handful of key areas. Here are seven big ones. Equity and access. How do we promote equitable access to brain-based therapeutics and technology for everyone? Privacy. Who should have the right to our personal brain data and how should it be used? Capacity and consent. How can we ensure people are able to understand and make decisions about how to choose to interact with brain technologies? Agency and autonomy. How will brain technologies affect our sense of self and our free will? Dual or unintended use. What are the potential harmful uses of brain technologies and how do we prevent misuse of them? Safety and patient protection. How do we ensure the physical, psychological and emotional safety of patients and users? Public engagement. How do we responsibly raise awareness and engage in dialogue with the public about neuroethics issues? Some might say it's the job of the government to step in and make sure technology is used in a way that protects patients and the public. However, brain technology is moving faster than regulation. This issue is known as the pacing problem. Knowing this, scientists, doctors and business leaders are looking for practical guidance on how to develop ethical neurotechnology. BrainMind is working with leading organisations to raise awareness and co-create the best tools and practices for responsible innovation in neurotechnology. Learn more about BrainMind's Neuroethics Initiative at BrainMind.org.